It's two years to election 2024, a very crucial election for the party in power, which is seeking to break the eight, something that has not been done in democratic period since 1992. The opposition party says this is the time it has to come back to office to save Ghanaians. You can say the two parties have logged horns in terms of who is going to lead the party at a crucial time. Nana Dodan Kwakufado, the president, is not going to run again, which means the party will need a new flag bearer. On the NDC side, John Mahama is hoping to be on the flag again, but he has two contenders. On Face to Face today, I'm going to engage with the governing party, the new patriotic party, assess the government in office so far, and look at projections ahead of the elections of 2024. Who is going to emerge? How is that person going to emerge? My name is Umar Sandamadu, and you're welcome to Face to Face. My guest on Face to Face is a new General Secretary of the governing New Patriotic Party. Uh, he was involved in other things before taking up the high office of the New Patriotic Party as the administrator. JFK is the initial that he used for the campaign, Justin Frimpong Kodia. You're welcome to Face to Face. Uh, good evening, my brother. How are you? I'm doing great. You're, you're looking all smiley. Things are looking good for you. There's no stress in it, it seems <laughs> like. Or you're hiding the stress, you're sitting on it. Because I've gotten used to the job. How, how has it been do for you? I mean, because you never held any, you know, small party office position. You went straight for general secretary. Boom, like that. Uh, maybe um, I need to correct you on that. Okay, please do. I was the deputy Ashanti Regional Regional level, okay. Regional level. Okay. Okay. Then I became the substantive regional organizer from 2014 to 2017 until uh, so I became the YEC. For Ashanti region. Ashanti. So you were doing this with um, um, Gideon Baku, or yes, he, uh, he handed uh, over I to was you? Deputy to Gideon. Okay. Then when Gideon left, I became Took over. Uh, the regional organizer. I see, I see. So you've done some administrative, not administrative, because organize, youth organizer, you are, you are doing grassroots work. Yes. But this one, you're playing a role of administrator, operations, strategy, and all of that. You are like the chief executive of the party. You have been a CEO before, so it shouldn't be difficult. Yes. But this is CEO of a political party, not of YEA. Yes. How, how different is it for you? Uh, well, to go your own way, it's, it's, it's more of an administrative role, just as the role I had at YEA. As CEO here in charge of the day to day administration uh, of, of, the, of the party, uh, similar to the work I was doing at YE. And if you look at the party structure, um, we have the national executives, um, the national chairman who chairs meetings, so it's more like the board chair uh, for the party. And beneath it, we have national officers, we have the regional party, we have the consensus party. So if you have to just oppose it with uh, BC of YE, it's by having a board, having directors at the headquarters, having a regional directors, and having district directors. Mm. So it's much similar, but it's political position. So there are certain decisions that you can take as a YE CEO, which you cannot implement those decisions in the political settings. In, 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 in terms of uh, YE, there were rules and guidelines, public procurement rules, financial management, uh, so relationship with Parliament of Ghana, the sector minister, my politics. Um, and this has, I find myself as this um, general secretary for the ruling government or in the party. It's about human interactions, mm. about dealing with um, sometimes the egos of, of certain uh, party people, whether the rank or the FARC. Sometimes you may be wrong, but in the professional setting, you can just easily suspend the person or sack or interdict the person. But in politics, in these things, you need to always tread cautiously on how you deal with, uh, deal with them. Mm. But by and large, I'm not overwhelmed. Mm. Mm. 
In fact, one of the criticisms against you was that you didn't have the experience, you wanted to take over a job with, who's, with someone who had experience and all of that, and that experience would be a problem for you. How has it been like for you so far? Um, um, and I always disagreed with that assertion. Everyone at a point in time was inexperienced. I believe before you became a journalist, you didn't have that experience. No, I didn't. When you started, with time, you have gotten used to the environment that you work in. It's the same thing. But one particular thing that you need to carry along is your desire to work, to succeed. Whenever there is that determination to work, you are able to learn on the job. So every day we learn. Today we are learning uh, from each other. Mm -hmm. So that should be the mindset. To, to work together and move forward, you need a united front. Now, there are issues of loyalty. You came to dislodge a team of executives. You removed a general secretary. Um, have you been able to heal as a party? NDC came out recently. They are still working on that. You came up earlier. But, of course, there's still an issue that you removed someone who was there for some time, having been organizer, then became general secretary. Have you been able to heal and break, uh, I mean, unite your front? So, well, uh, it's part of our democratic tenets. And definitely the moment you have what the vision to contest, at the same time, you also have at the back of your mind that come four years' time, someone will, will also be eyeing your seat. And that's part of a bit of our democracy. And we are used to it as a party. For every four years, we run elections for police station to electoral area, constituency, region, national. So everyone who go for contest understand that in elections, you can win, you can also you can also lose. Once you have that at the back of your mind, you psych yourself for the whatever eventualities that mm. will come up. Mm. And with respect to my senior brother, uh, John Gordon. My relationship with him now is like there was no relations. Okay. We have a very good relationship. Yesterday, even at our national council meeting, there are certain uh, proposals or certain uh, information that he gave, which was very helpful. And there are certain things that I said that because he had also been in that position before, he came in to support certain positions or proposals that I made. After all, we just met him. We are chatting about mm. the job and uh, the things that he did, the good things, and also the mistake that he also made that he doesn't want me to, to also, repeat. To also to repeat. So that tells the level of. So you put talk, you call each other yes, on phone, you I talk. I always see him as my senior. Okay, brother. okay. That's, that's the relationship that exists uh, between the two. I see. How about your chairman? How, how is he fitting in? I mean, he has been looking for this job for 20 years. Yes, uh, I always say that he has been there that is for mm, 20 years. Mm, and, mm. And uh, now that uh, God has made it possible for him to become a national chairman, he would never joke with that position. And he is very clear in his mind what he wants to do as a national chairman, he also to make history, uh, uh, making sure that we win the elections in 2024. And I can tell you, the relationship between myself and my chairman is excellent. Mm -hmm. And I couldn't have wished for any better relationship than what exists between us, and even mm -hmm. among the national party. That's why. You don't hear any pain or you don't hear any noise or negative comments. You are united. Than this kind of How about your, your, your key opponents, the NDC? They have a far experienced pair of hands. Johnson, I said, Nketia was a man people were comparing you with because he was general secretary. He's moved to be chairman now. He has been general secretary since 2005. Fifi Kwete has been a national officer before propaganda. Now he's a general secretary. You and Steven in team versus Mosquito and um, um, Fifi Kwiti. How are you matching up? Are you sure you are uh, an equal pair in, in this context? See, sometimes uh, I, I feel uncomfortable with these kinds of knowledge or analysis between us and them. NBC has its own tradition. The party was formed from PNDC. They have their belief, they have their mission as a political party. NPP was also formed differently from the NDC. So we also have our mission and ideology. So you cannot compare the two. What we stand for is different from what they stand for. But you are looking for votes. Yeah, but at the end of the day, they all have different ideology. Then at that, then there will be no point to have elections if you have the same ideology. What NPP will look out 
for him electing his officers will basically be different from the audience we look at for you. And at the end of the day, when people talk about this, um, the NDC chairman experience in the position and those things, like you rightly say, the bottom line is the political political parties are formed to the elections. So at the end of the day, what you experience, what you have, the knowledge, the relationship must result in you winning the election. For us, we have our own staff. And the secretary here, the NDC chairman, has been a general secretary, has won election before, and has equally lost election before. So it's not like a myth or it's something that you should be afraid of, that there's a person who don't, who don't lose election. Then when you are going to contest with them, then you be afraid. Don't watch how mm. you should be afraid or to be intimidated by them. That's what they see. These people are one election. That was one election before. He's not like Alex Ferguson. He's like Porter. <laughs> no, no, I'm not going to talk about Venga now. It's, it's <laughs> okay, oh, please, please. It's just temporary. It's okay. Okay, let's let's move on. So you have elected your national officers. You are fine. Your your job now is to produce a flag bearer and also supervise the elections of your parliamentary elections. Walk us through what your calendar is like and how that process is going. Uh, just have to make a reference for my phone. Mm. Um, you know, for some time now, there were discussion as to when the party will come out with its timelines. And for MPP, before we come out with a decision, there always has to be a broader consultation among key stakeholders. So in the back and forth, the consultation going on, and trying to have the input of all those who matters, the steering committee of the party, which um, happens to be the, the fourth largest decision making one of the party met, and we were able to come out unanimously with a proposal on the timelines for the presidential and parliamentary primaries. Then just yesterday, um, we took the proposals to the party national executive committee. There were several deliberations on it. And after coming to an, another level of consensus, uh, it was moved to the National Council, which is the second higher decision and making body of the party after national conference. So uh, if I'm to run you through the, the, the timelines, uh, for presidential primaries, um, the party will open nomination on the 26th of May, uh, 2023. Next month. Next month. Then the, the close of nomination will be on 24 June 2023. So, our month. So, a whole month, okay. In line with what the Constitution. So, this is uh, just to come and pick the forms at the party office? Yes. And for one month. Then you submit the forms. Okay. By so, 24 June. You should have returned. Submitted. Okay, 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 okay. So, one uh, interesting aspect that's. No, wait, let me know. So, you, you pick forms 20. May. May. Yes. You go and fill it, whatever, yeah, return, it return it by 24th. Of June. Of June. Okay. Not 25th. Okay. 24th. Okay. okay. Right. So, um, if you recall, in 2007, we had about 17 aspirants. And that's the data is born. Uh, yeah. You suffered for it. We paid the for it. Mm -hmm. but based on that experience, the party. Uh, Apache, so the party, Paraki also talked it twice to amend uh, the constitution so that at least in future that unfortunate incident wouldn't happen. So if you read Article 13, 1, 9 of our party constitution, it states clearly that where there are more than five uh, candidates or five aspirants, the party shall go into what we refer to as special electoral college to prove the number to five. So if on 24th June, after all the forms are returned, and they return them to the general secretary, right? Yes. You look at it and realize that there are more than five. So even if there are six people who filed to contest, it means you have to go through this process you're talking about. Yes. Okay. So what would that process entail? So, um, the, so what we have is that we have made provision. 
and also of course we know the number of people who are shown into a test that they have not mm -hmm. officialized so if by the uh, by the 24th or 25th we know that there are about more than five then there's a provision in the calendar to have a special delegate election on 26th of august and the constitution again is very clear on those who are part of that special so from program. june july august you're going to have the special congress yes okay and who are the people who can vote uh we read um, on top of my head um is the members of the national council uh, members of the national executive committee um, regional executive committee members of parliament uh, three representatives from the special organs of the party the youth wing the women's wing nasara then also three representatives from each external branch. You know we have external branches mm -hmm. as a party. Then also founding members of our party. Then all uh, uh, card bearing ministers okay. of our party form the special electoral college. So this would be a smaller number, about thousand maybe. So this one is an electoral college to prune down the number to five. five yes. They are not choosing your flag bearer no, for you. Not. Okay. They not. So they reduce the number to five. Yes. And it will be first come the post. So the first five. First five. Okay. What happens next? So after that, then uh, the final or the national congress to elect the flag bearer will come on on the fourth of November. November. Twenty twenty three. So from August to November from August to November. Mm -hmm. So if everything goes according to plan, by 4th November, we should have a flag bearer for the party. But it's elections. There's a possibility that there could be a tie. In that case, I also need a preparation for runoff, which will come on on the 11th of November. Also, 4th of November, if there's a runoff, it goes to 11th of November. November. Who are the delegates for the 4th of November election? Uh, that, that's a brother. Electoral college. Is it every card bearing member of the party no, or we have not put in there yet. Okay. so for the um, national congress uh, again because I'm not having the constitution mm -hmm. here, I'll just uh, paraphrase it. Um, members who voted for it at the special college are automatically part of part, it. okay. Then you have patrons for the regions. Okay. Uh, about five members from the Council of Patriots in the region, five members from Council of Elders in the region. Then we also have constituency executives. Okay, all, co all constituency executives. 17 constituency executives are part of the electoral college. Uh, also five council um, of patrons, five council of elders. From then constituency. From constituency. Which means each constituency will bring like 22 people. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, but then police station executives. Okay. Five, five. So we have about 38,000 times uh, five. Times five. That's so huge. Station executive and also electoral area coordinators are also uh, part of the college. So these are the ones who will be voting on November 4. On November 4. And uh, that's, that's the day America votes, except that they will not vote in this year. This Otherwise, year it, would have, it would have yes. coincided with their voting day. So that election, you cannot have a Congress. People cannot come on one grounds to come and vote. And over 200,000 people. So you have to do polling stations so across the... What, what is likely to happen is to be more of... Uh, we do segregate it into constituencies, just like constituencies okay. in conference. So every constituency, the electoral college will, make, will, will merge there to cast their votes. For the day, so is it well, going to be an entire day exercise? National election. And where do you declare your results? At the head office, or how do we know? Or would there be like a coalition center where yeah, there will definitely be a coalition center, just so, like how you are. National so then you declare election. that this person has won, and so if there's a runoff, you go to November 11th. 11 to go and do that. Now, if the candidates or aspirants are no more than five, would you hold the main congress in August, or you still have to wait till November four? Yeah, we still have to wait. Till so ultimately, November 4 is the election of your flag bearer, yes. whether or not the, the aspirants are more than five. five yes. That's for flag bearer. Five, um, right now, you haven't opened nominations yet. Yes. People who are campaigning, are they flouting your party rules? Uh, yes, if you are to go by the code of conduct that was promulgated some time ago, yes. But again, um, as a political party, we also understand that when you make rules, there should be room for 
for some of these unforeseen things that may happen. And it will also happen because Assad's yesterday when we came out with the Thai lives, potential aspects were not clear as to how the process were going to uh, begin. We were not clear as to whether we were going to have it this month or next month. So it became a bit jittery and it made it impossible, impossible for them to also make their plan. But now that the, the calendar is out, it, it's streamlined, it has streamlined all these things that we have raised. But, but, but people, people can still campaign. They can put up billboards, which we have been seeing. They can organize mini rallies and meet executive delegates. It's fine. Uh, um, of course, now that we are closer to opening up nomination, it, it makes sense that they do that. It's, 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 it's expected. Okay. All right. So they are supposed to declare before they come and pick forms, or the person can choose however they want. All you need is to have the forms returned. Is okay. Maybe, what about this controversy around an early Congress and a late Congress? How have you maneuvered your way out of that? Well, I remember a national chairman when the, uh, that question was posed, asked how early is your end and mm -hmm. how, how late is your end. Mm -hmm. But we are also guided by the Constitution. The MPP Constitution, then again, Article 13, talks about when we are in opposition, how, how late we can organize our primaries and also when we are in government. For instance, now that we are in government, it says that the party shall hold its presidential primaries not later than 11 months to uh, the general elections. So any time before the 11th month to the general elections, you can hold uh, our presidential primaries. So this new date that you have come up with, the president agrees with you, the Jubilee House? Uh, what I can tell you is that the decision is a decision for National Council. The President is part of National Council. Because there was a time we heard that he had traveled, you could not come to a consensus. We were told that uh, the Jubilee House wasn't really uh, excited about your date. There were all manner of issues. You are sure that Jubilee House is happy with your no, position? I, 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 I don't want us to treat Jubilee House as a separate as entity. A separate entity. And, uh, Jubilee House party, is powerful. In our party constitution, there's nothing like Jubilee House. Mm. So I don't know which Jubilee House you are talking about. The President of the Republic. No, but again, our President is part of TNC. Mm -hmm. Our President is part of NEC. Our President is part of National Council. Mm -hmm. And when it gets to all these bodies, it's about what the majority of things. And if, if you have had interaction with our President, he's someone who respects the party so much. And there have meetings where we've gone that uh, he has brought certain proposals and in a respectful manner we have to, we, we disagree with him and he said okay if that's what the party is saying he will just follow the party so okay. with this i can tell you never at any point in time did the president become a standing block okay. to us as coming out the right. this is face to face on city tv my guest is the general secretary of the new patriotic party he's just walked us through the flag bearership plans of the party the parliamentary side is also going to happen. Everything will culminate in February of 2024. Uh, some critics and watchers say that that is rather too late for the party, and if there are cracks, it will be difficult to fix them. We'll come back. I'll talk to you about that. Please stay. Haven't you heard? EGL Ramadan Easter promotion. promotion. Electroland Ghana Limited is offering you quality products from Samsung, Toshiba, Nasco, and Media. Choose your choice. Media AC, Samsung AC, Nasco AC. <laughs> With 229 Ghana CDs, get yourself a Nasco gas stove. Buy one, get one free. So stocks last. With 1,099 Ghana CDs, and Nasco television is yours. Grab your TV ranging from 32 inches, 40 inches to 98 inches. I tell you. Simply put it, all types of refrigerators and washing machines, microwaves, and sound bars are available this Easter and Ramadan. Electro Langana Limited is the promotion. Don't, Don't let this opportunity you pass you by. You're welcome back. This is Face to Face on City TV. My guest is Justin Frimponko. They are his general secretary of the governing New Patriotic Party. Let's talk now about your parliamentary election. So the flag bearership, everything ends by November 4 or November 11. By that time, you would have produced a flag bearer. Okay, how about parliamentary candidates? What's your plan? Uh, there again, also, when the party still committee, the National Council met, um, the consensus was that we separate orphan constituencies 
platform where we have sitting libraries. So in the wisdom of national council, um, the dates that have been set for the offer constituencies are as follows. Uh, the opening of nomination for offer constituencies will be on 16 June. Then the closing date will be on 14 July. That's like one month, okay. almost one month. Then the elections uh, is, is, is the election period is a uh, novelty that we have also brought on board. Uh, it starts from 1st August to 2nd uh, December. For three months? Yes, so from 1st August to 2nd uh, December. Actually, it's more than three months. We having our, our farm constituency elections. Why? Why that long period? Four months? Well, well as a party, uh, we, we have a strategy. And the strategy is to make sure that we win more seats in 2024. So the rest of the National Council, these timelines or these dates are the best time or dates for us to organize our offer constituents. Um, we are not treating all constituents the same. So we want to make sure that at least this is done in a well-calculated manner to make sure that whoever the party will select or elect as the candidate for the, those of our ones are those that can win the seats for us. And this thing takes much background work behind the scenes, with consultations, analysis, and also we are doing ourselves from the first choice. 137 of constituencies, that's the number that you don't have. Those are the orphan constituencies. Yes. And it means that you are going to block them, or you are going to do each one on each day. How are you planning? Is, is uh, it? It's, it's something that uh, my you get to know. So you are not revealing that filler now. Uh, for now, no. Oh. By the end of the day, you, you get to know when you start. You hear that oh, we are doing uh, primaries at Sikki, maybe we are doing primaries at Dental. Okay. For that one, you cannot. Okay. Do the CK, but okay. So. Uh, we come up with this. I'm unable to tell which time we are doing first, which time we are doing Okay. Last. So, often would finish by December 2nd. Okay. What about where you have sitting MPs? Uh, we also, with respect to uh, where we have sitting MPs, uh, the processes will start from 20th of December. Uh, that's, that's how far away you're going to start? Yes, uh, 20th of December. Way after you've elected a flag bearer? Well, the flag bearer is on the 4th of November. That's what I'm saying. So, so way after. Um, couple of weeks, about six weeks, and then we do the... Before you even open nominations? Yes. So we open nomination on 20th of December. Why? Well, the MPs bullied you, eh? They refused they to let you... Us. Nobody can They the told party. you not to touch their seats. Nobody can believe the party. At the end of the day, we all understand that it's the party that has put us at where we are. Okay. So nobody at any point in time can challenge the authority of the party. In fact, okay. what I can tell you that the decision that we arrive at was by consensus. And that process will start from 20th December and ends on the 4th of January. So that's picking and returning of nominations. Picking and returning. So unlike the orphan and the presidential that had one month duration, mm -hmm. which one has about two weeks mm -hmm. uh, the duration, then the, the election uh, will be held on the 24th of February 2024. So all things being equal, we should have our parliamentary candidate for the, uh, the uh, sitting and uh, peace constituencies by 24 February 2024. By which time NDT would have long chosen their parliamentary candidates for both orphan and sitting constituencies and they would have been busily campaigning. You are in a comfortable lead enjoying and waiting for nothing. Why, why, why that decision? It's something that we have, we have, we have, have to do, have to deal, or have to deal with as political party, both NDC and P. When you are in opposition, your plan is different when you are in government. Mm -hmm. And when you are in government, it's the duty of your members of parliament to make sure they support the programs and activities of government mm -hmm. when it comes to parliament. You understand? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And also, apart from that, there are special programs and activities that the party will be embarking for these constituency that we have sitting members of parliament. And you look at 2008, uh, the, the sitting MPs election were held somewhere in April. Also in so this is considered earlier? 
what you are doing is earlier than. But but the difficulty is that if some MP is not happy that he has lost, he will become aloof, and he may even incite people against his candidate. There may be independent candidates emerging. Can you deal with all of those things? See, um, it, for me, what I believe in is organization. You know, yes, February, between February and December, you may think it's not long, but in terms of political uh, arena, it's a long period. You let's see even one day, can you make a difference? So it depends on what we, as a part, the internal structures that we put in place, the reconciliatory processes that we also put in place, and our strategy that will determine it. You can have early primaries, but it may, it may come out with several controversies, several irreparable uh, conditions or situations. You may even have mental primaries or late primaries, but everything will go on smoothly. That at the end of the day, you come out as a united party. Okay. So I'm more interested in the processes and the outcome. I, I think it's also a new thing that you're choosing a flag bearer before parliamentary candidates in constituencies where you have sitting MPs. Why that? Uh, this it hasn't been the same. Even in 2008, we elected a flag bearer. Before you chose your... Is it that you want the flag bearer to determine who becomes a parliamentary candidate in your safe seats? Uh, certainly not. I, I Are you sure? You want him to be comfortable? No, I don't know it's not. Yeah. The party is not built around personalities. Okay. The party is built around the majority thinking or the consensus by the majority of mm. that party. Mm. And the reason why we are having these processes is to make sure that at the end of the day, each stakeholder in the party is happy with the system and also will inure to the general benefit of our party. Okay. There are several considerations that I cannot even disclose here. Okay. But the timeline that we have come uh, out with are uh, well thought out true, very well thought true, very, very, very well thought true timelines. And we know that at the end of the day, that looking at the circumstances that we find ourselves in, the best decision Let's look at the money involved. How much do presidential candidates have to pay? Uh, it's, it's, it's similar to um, the 2020 elections, uh, even though uh, by the close of nominations, also with the person who paid for, uh, we charged um, that time 30000 for picking up nomination points and 300000 for filing. This time around, we are charging 50000 for picking up nomination forms and maintaining the same. 300,000 for filing. That's whether or not you're making it out of the num out of the five. Exactly. But if, if after the, f the, the August one, the final people who go to be the top five, would you have to pay new money or the same no, old money? Okay, how about the parliamentary? Can they how much? The parliamentary primaries, uh, we charge 2,000 in the previous uh, primaries. This time around is 3,000. And the filing fee was um, 30,000. This time around is 35,000. But however, it will encourage women participation and youth participation and also persons with disabilities. The party is giving out a rebate okay. of 50% to those people. To those people. But it looks like because you're in power, you don't need money crowd. NDC is charging 400,000 for presidential. You are 300,000. Yeah, but President, they are complaining since the system is hard. But they have money to do no, they need money. They, they need money. Oh, that's yeah. interesting. No, it's just JM and Kojo and Kamala. Maybe you have plenty of money, so you don't need you don't need, need, you know you don't need party money. We are also being considered yeah. and we also understand the situation we find ourselves in as a party and even as a country. If opposition party can charge four hundred, five hundred thousand, well at least it tells how, uh, how, how is your how is your party going to deal with independent candidates? We do know that the Formula MP has been a learning curve for you people. How are you going to approach independent candidates in the upcoming election? It starts with us asking ourselves these questions. What are the conditions that we need someone to go independent? Mm. What are the factors? Once we are able to answer those questions or conditions, then you are halfway through addressing the question of independent candidate arising out from our premise. One, the processes that leads to one opening of nomination, closing of nomination, vetting, appeals, and credible voter register are very key. 
Okay. I don't see why, if you are a true patriot, you go through, uh, if you have been able to pick your forms, you have submitted your forms, you've gone through vetting, you are passed or you are disqualified based on cogent reason. And at the end of the day, you may win the elections or you are disqualified or you may lose the elections, then come out and say you're going on independent. But however, from previous elections and from what I've read from Safmarfo's report and then from 2007 where we had some independent, some consequences, it all boils down to the processes. For me, if the processes are free, fair, transparent, it reduces the tendency of people going to contest as independent candidates. Okay. Okay, so so that's how you're reading with it. Our focus should get to be geared towards having a credible okay. This is Face to Face on City TV. My guest is General Secretary of the New Patriotic Party, and uh, we are discussing the party's internal issues. Let's go to the camp of the NDC now. Johnson, I see the chairman of the NDC, after the President's State of the Nation Address, also did what they call the True State of the Nation Address. You issued a statement saying you respond in due course, and uh, on Tuesday, your national chairman called the press and you responded. Did you respond to the part where Mosquito said that uh, corruption has uh, eventually finished the president and his family members? <laughs> and that you are, your cor corruption fight is abysmal, your records are bad? But well, you see that open my book. I just want to make a reference to what was captured. Now, okay. The truth of the matter is, if it was just the statement by a Sidiketia and he didn't seek to mislead the good people of Ghana, and also based on their previous behavior, particularly reference to 2007, whereby their strategy was let's throw into the system propaganda and get Ghanaians to believe it. We would have responded to the press, the press conference by the NDC. But because of experience from 2007, where several unverified allegations were made against the Kofa administration, if you recall, that Kofa has stolen all the gold reserved in Ghana and in fact, some bank accounts were printed, potential bank accounts, allegedly belonging to certain key ministers of, 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 of the MPP and administration. It's some Ghanaians bought into it, and some believed it to be true, to the point when Fifi uh, appeared before the appointment committee and was posed or asked those questions for anybody for him to say, it was just a political statement and didn't have any facts on that. That's why they are responding to it. We don't want a situation where bad things don't happen. And I'm surprised the NBC will have the moral right to talk about corruption in this country and level corruption against the NBC. You emboldened them. I'm very surprised. You see, Maru, the major issue in this country is that when you talk about corruption, the first thing you know, or the perception has always been about politicians. What is corruption? So I was saying, even in your setup, in the media, there's no corruption there. We are not using public funds. We don't I'm, have... I'm, I'm making a point. Mm -hmm. I was saying that aside those politicians that you know, the civil service, the public service, the judiciary, no corruption there. It's something that if NBC were coming in good faith, their presentation should have been how as a nation we will address this issue, this camp that they They did that. They brought a school commissioner to investigate issues of corruption. And what happened? They have a report. And that what happened? It's supposed to be implemented. They did? No. So at the end of the day, between the two parties, Let's ask ourselves which of them have shown by, by action the desire to 
fight corruption. Public procurement act, which sought to make sure we streamline the processes of procuring services and goods in the public sector, was introduced to the President of Force Tenure. Meanwhile, DC were in government from PNDC. 1981, 82. Don't add that one. Start from 92. But you're in that business. No, that was soldier. You may look at it from your, from your own that, perspective. No, from that was. From 1992. Mm -hmm. Use 92. To 2008 years. Mm -hmm. What did they do about instituting an act to address corruption? They you had remember to. the Racial Bureau's Act? Mm -hmm. Again, it was introduced by the Ufa administration. Fast forward to UFA administration, Office of the Special Prosecutor was introduced by this government. You may have this own shop coming and challenging those, those things, but at least to even have the desire and courage that we admit that these are the issues confronting the country. These are the challenges. But what's Let's the, start the process. What's the point of having an OSB that has not, you know, has not been properly fitted with the tools that it needs to fight to we haven't seen any successful prosecution yet. Well, at the end of the day, I also look at it from different angles. Mm. We cannot say that it's all well for every government ministry or institution. We all have challenges. But at the end of the day, sometimes, even with the little resources that we have, we are able to make an impact. But so the accusation is that you are more corrupt and that you have been engulfed in corruption. You don't have... You sang corruption songs and removed John Mahama and the NDC. And that today, you are worse. In fact, the public procurement authority you talked about, the boss himself is standing trial for engaging in corrupt activities. That's how low you have sunk as a, uh, as a party in office. For, for, the, for the best of my knowledge, it was first special prosecutor. Yes. It's, right? And they are looking into it. Mm -hmm. I'm not aware that it's in court. So, at the end okay. of the day, if all those allegations that you, you are making or you have heard, until a court of competent judiciary hears the matter, tries it, and comes to determination, that it can make that statement that the LB is corrupt. The ones under NDC2 were not really brought. By the end of the day, At the time you were singing Wayome, he was not brought to court. No, by the end of the day, mm -hmm. between NDC and PP, mm -hmm. which, which, which members of our party are languishing in jail? Because NDC prosecuted their yeah. own, and they said that that's an example. Not they from brought. The time of they, Kufa. Yes. You know, we want us to mention the names. No, but NDC argues that they brought their own to court and have been able to prosecute them, and they are in jail now. That's a and good wow, faith. Yeah, and yeah. that you, 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 they said the president is a clearing agent. When someone is accused of corruption, he himself will come and say, oh, no, he's not corrupt. Let him go. Instead of allowing the state to go ahead and, and, and proceed. And I don't think the president has been a hindrance. Has he not? If, if the CID is investigating and he comes out to clear no, someone, that's no. a hindrance. Which, which situation? So many cases. You, I'm you sure you know. You know. Let me can give you on one occasion that Mr. A, mm. the CID was doing the, uh, the, CID was CID, CID was doing the investigation. Mm -hmm. the president alternative. You are not aware I'm not sure. that the president has come to clear anybody I don't have who, has, who is undergoing investigation. No, I if we have, can just supply no problem. Has MPP brought an action against any of its own apart from the PPA boss well, in court? Unless you, are, unless you are making the point that the president should be going around, nosing around, making sure that at least whether something has happened or has not happened, it should be people to go. That's he, why he has we have to. He has to. You see, the former special prosecutor, Martin, I mean, they refer to even the president himself as a mother serpent of corruption. Yeah. That man, when the president was appointing him as OSP or SSP, told us that he respected him so much, he had so much credibility. For such a man to accuse the president who appointed him of being a mother serpent of corruption, that is a huge scandal. Of course, the man has said several things. Mm. He also said several things against the former president, mm -hmm. John Mahama. Mm -hmm. So we should also take it to be true that John Mahama is very corrupt. He hasn't I, said your mama is very corrupt, but he, he talked about he issues relating to, yes, to, to, the, to, the, so to the airplane. As, 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 as a lawyer, certainly until the court determines that the act of inaction of a person amounts to corruption, I will not sit here with allegations. For me, we should allow state institutions to work 
the worst state situation bring these cases to court and the court comes to final determination. That's where we can succinctly say that indeed this person is corrupt or not. This is Face to Face on City TV. My name is Omar Rosanda. But apart from corruption, the NDC talked about the economy. We'll be touching briefly on that as well. And look at the party itself, generally how it is working in Parliament, uh, the governance issues, because this party birthed the government that we have now. Please stay with us. City TV is live on DSTV. Go to channel 363 on Go TV. Access City TV on channel 182. On a digital TV, please press the menu button on the remote control and run a new search on your TV. Take note that without an antenna, you cannot access City TV on your television. City TV can be accessed on a free to air digital box like the Go TV and Star Times box. City TV, it's your world. Haven't you heard? EGL Ramadan Easter promotion. Electroland Ghana Limited is offering you quality products from Samsung, Toshiba, Nasco, and Media. Choose your choice. Media AC, Samsung AC, Nasco AC. <laughs> With 229 Ghana CDs, get yourself a Nasco gas stove. Buy one, get one free. So stocks last. With 1,099 Ghana CDs, and Nasco television is yours. Grab your TV ranging from 32 inches, 40 inches to 98 inches. I tell you. Simply put it, all types of refrigerators and washing machines, microwaves, and sound bars are available as Easter and Ramadan. Electro Langana Limited is the promotion. Don't, Don't let this opportunity you pass you by. You're welcome back. This is Face to Face on City TV. My guest is the General Secretary of the party that is in power, uh, JFK. Your party promised us heaven. You are in office now and you are delivering us and you are giving us taxes. We can't pay for petrol. The dollar is on his own flight. What is happening? Is it that your men that you told us you had, you know, when you entered government, they deserted you or they are simply incompetent and clueless? What's happening? Because the economy there, you cannot. What's happening? Um, Mary, you know, agree with me that what is happening in Ghana is not different from what is happening in other countries in the world. No, it's, it's not true. In the sense that the cost of living in all parts of the, of the world has gone up, so it's gone high. In the sense that we are coming out or we have come out from a catastrophic pandemic that happened in 2019 to 2020. Sometimes I hear some of your colleagues trying to explain that it's like the MPP are overstretching or overemphasizing the COVID pandemic and the impact of the Russia-Ukraine war. Even when you go into other discussions, for an economy to get to a certain point, it doesn't happen just overnight. It takes certain preparation, certain planning to get certain stage of the economy to go. When an economy crashes, it again takes certain time before it can reset and get to the right path. I would prefer that we situate the discussion on how our economy was before COVID. At that point, if you recall, Ghana was touted as the fastest growing economy in the world. And if you also recall, when the MPP took over the helm of affairs in 2017, you can do the comparison. What was the inflation rate? What was the GDP? Let's use a liter of petrol. At the time, it was less than three cities. No, the dollar, rather. It was less than three cities. Yes. Today, it's over 12 cities. Before the COVID pandemic came up, was the rate? You tell me. What's your story? Right at that point, we we're doing between six to seven cities. So that's more than hundred hundred percent that you course, have done. At the end of the day, you look at the setup of our economy mm. from 1992 to today. Someone can also refer to 
what was the dollar rate? You told us that you're going to move us from taxation to production. Yes. You have it, done it, the worst of taxation based, now. Based on what transpired between 2017 to 2019, the initiative that this government introduced, the go free that we are recording in all sectors of the economy, not on the right path towards commercializing our economy. Then COVID came in. And the reason why I always place emphasis on the impact of COVID is that for over a year, the economy was shut down. Revenues were not coming in. Productivity was not going on. Companies had to lay off workers. But in the midst of all this crisis, the government was running. Certainly, at that point, certain loans were also contracted and certain grants were also given. But that does not take away the fact that the company that shut down, working that will live off. It will take time for even those companies to revive and get to the point that they were before the COVID. Ask yourself now, as I speak to you, you go to Kenya, even to exchange their local currency to get dollars to buy food has become a problem. And as I speak to you, a sorting of food in Kenya. You talk about the first uh, the, uh, the, 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 the advanced countries in the world. UK, at the point in time, even vegetables, even cooking oil, they have to do ration, rationalization of it, so that at least each one will get maybe one one of all these items. And this is the first world country I'm talking about. Imagine living in Ghana, and we have to ration maybe pepper. What would the situation be like? Why don't, so, you, why don't you reduce the size of government? That would help. That's one of the key things that have been put on your neck. And you and, keep... And, and, and you see, the point I'm making is that you look, you look at countries, even Ivy Coast, around us. Now, as I speak to you, Ivy Coast in zero negotiation with IMF to get 2.6 billion dollars to get into their economy. The same like what is happening in Ghana. And with respect to the size of government that you are talking about, in the first term, we had 126 ministers. But as I speak to you, the number has gone down to 86 ministers that we have. The ministries that you scrap, you turn them into secretariats, maintaining the same staff and everything is running the same. The only thing is that there's no minister there. Everything is, remains the same. So, for instance, you can give reference to like, which, which ministry Oh, the Zongo ministry is gone, but the Zongo fund, the, the Special Development Initiative ministry is gone, but there's a secretariat. All these things well, are still there. The ministry, when it was there, also had the Zongo Development Fund. The yeah. Fund was established by an act. Yes, so, so, so that is still running. The so Special so Development Initiative still has a secretariat. It is running. Yeah, you are building a national cathedral in the midst of all of these things. So, so let us not just put the national cathedral to the size of government. No, it's all, it's all, it's all, it's all, it's all expenditure. It's, it's all expenditure. But and if that if you, you pause on some things, you can do better in I other things. That's a reference to what we have done as a, as a government in addressing the issue about the size of government, as I indicated, from 126 to 86. Mm -hmm. As I speak to you now, there's 30% cuts on the salary of all government appointees. Also, there's a 50% cut on full cohort allocation to, to government appointees. There's suspension of all foreign travels, except pre-approved statutory travels. There's a ban on using of V8 or set for cross country. Is that happening? I've been seeing V8 in Accra moving around buying, you know, groceries. If you see V8, that means it, the government appointed. Oh, but government, ha government has plenty of V8. So how do you, how do you, how do you we that see when, do you see the Pechepe one? It's been for government. Well, it, 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 I think it's, 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 it's a run okay. Jeff, okay, we need to go, but the question to you is 2024, are you really sure and serious that you can break the eight, considering what the economy has done to us? Well, I know what are you going to tell Ghanaians? No, I'm, I'm, because Ghanaians still have confidence in this government. Because Ghanaians know that when it comes between the NDC and the NPP, NPP are better managers of the economy than the NDC. 
Ghanaians also appreciate the fact that had it not been MPP, it was NDC situation that would be worse off than what you're experiencing now. Mpony. Of course. And I'm telling you, NDC were in government, the situation would be worse off. Even without any COVID, even without any Russia Ukraine war, we saw what ended, what happened under Mr. President of Mahama. Four years of doing so. The scrapping of teacher nursing children allowances. You can pay capitation grant for school children. Of course, but we are not. The caterers, the caterers said they are not going to cook is, from today. Are, in Kumasi, your home region, I Ashanti. Agree. These are all part of the challenges that we face as a government. But then we come out of it, unlike the NDs, which to Ghanaians that, well, for the COVID that has come, we should not allow our children to go to school, they should stay home. With the same endies, when we discovered oil, they determined us a jungle. With the same endies with that to Ghanaians, that free senior high school is not possible in Ghana. They are telling us that they are better management, managers of the economy than the LP. Thank you so much for speaking to us, sir. It has been a pleasure. That's Justin Frimpong Kodia. He's National General Secretary it's, it's of General the... Secretary. Not National, but you're National. Our is General Secretary. Okay, he's the General Secretary of the National New Patriotic Party. It's not like National New Patriotic It's not National. It's New Patriotic Party. Okay, so Justin Frimpong Kodia is General Secretary of the party with a national outreach known as That's New Patriotic Party. Party. My name is Umaru Sanda Awadu. Thank you for watching Face to Face on City TV. Stay with us. It's your world. Sacrifice, rebirth, and compassion is here again. And as it is done every year, we will be celebrating it exceptionally with our Easter special program on City TV. Let's come together with one heart and mind as we commemorate the death and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ with edifying songs of worship, exaltation, and praise on the 7th and 9th of April 2023. It's going to be a memorable experience as we honor the passion of Christ with song ministrations from Edinburgh Bright Davis and Cece Beidou on Good Friday from 7 a.m. to 9 a.m. Lord, you are worthy. And I'm honored to sing your praise King of glory There is no one like you To deserve all praise and glory to your name Yes, Lord Later in the day, we will make your Good Friday extra special. We will bring you a live broadcast of the 25th anniversary of Harvest Praise on City TV at 4 p.m. sharp. Kofi Kakari and the Bethel Revival Choir will take us away with all inspiring harmonies to meet our resurrected King on Easter Sunday from 7 a.m. to 9 a.m. Tune to City TV on Good Friday and Easter Sunday for the Easter special and be blessed. City TV, it's definitely your world this Easter. Hello and welcome to City Sports Roundup with me, Benjamin Inketia. Coming up.
A high court in Accra convicts GFA General Secretary Prosper Addo in contempt case against Ashanti Gold. Also, Brighton and Hall.